You might think the back of a car is a strange place to start a car review, but this isn't any ordinary boot. It's the boot of the brand new Skoda Octavia. And let me explain. This boot is 600 litres in space in a normal configuration. Most cars like this are 400-ish. So straight away you get an idea of what Skoda are at. And there's so much Simply Clever, their famous motto, going on in this car. Let me demonstrate. First of all, the parcel shelf, that fits into your boot. Second of all, you pull them and the rear seats go in. There's massive hooks here to secure down a herd of Rottweilers. And there's tethering hooks everywhere else and there's lights and 12 volts and there's little separate storage compartments. There's proper actual spare wheels. What they've managed to achieve here with a boot is just incredible. And that leads me on to something. Because you see, what Skoda have created in this all new Octavia is the most car you're ever going to need. The nose is classically Skoda, nothing major indifference going on there. You might have Skoda crystal lighting if you spec it on your car. But the big difference is around the back because the car has created a bit of an overhang. And that gives you all that extra space in the boot, but not just the boot. For the first time on the Octavia anyway, because you'll get this massive lettering across the back of all their current and future models. Well, you know, it's nothing to be ashamed of anymore that you're driving a Skoda. They haven't even bothered to put in some fake exhaust down here. And you know what, of all the times I've reviewed cars at the back and thought, okay, they're there, but they would kind of look weird without them. Well, now I know that it doesn't look weird without them and everyone should just do what Skoda are doing because it looks fine. The Octavia is also quite stylish when it comes to lights because LED repeaters are in here and the whole thing just flows into the car beautifully. As I mentioned, the overhang gives you a really decent boot, but it also gives you loads of leg room for rear passengers. You need to check this out. Even with a driver's seat fairly far back, like, it is like sitting in the first class area of a Boeing 747. Okay, not quite that good, but it really is exceptional, outstanding, class leading, all those things you want to call it. You've got two pockets back here. One even has the little logo stitched in of a phone or a tablet to say, hey, you can chuck me down here. You get an armrest, which is really, really big and some little clippy holdy things, possibly for a pen actually in here. Um, that's gonna hold a decent sized cup. In fact, it's possibly better than the ones in the front. I'll reveal all very soon. There's two eyes fix either side, fairly big hump, two USB charging options, you're gonna need adapters, and there's two vents that you can turn on and off but you can't control with climate control, although there is a gap here for stuff and I wonder, would you be able to option climate in the back? Chances are, yes. The headroom. This is like, this is again, all you need in a car. I'm gonna have to keep saying that. And then the view out towards the front of the car is still pretty good. Shoulders of the seats are really wide and supportive for the driver, but still aren't high enough that you're totally sitting back here in darkness. It really is quite spectacular. So the thing about the Octavia is it's a car that you can get starting from 20 something, but it's a car that you can keep going with if you're bananas to a car that will be 40 something. For that, you can get glass sunroof, the estate version, more trim specs, heads up display like what's in this car. If you go for the two liter TDI 150 brake horsepower engine, you're gonna be able to do almost 1000 kilometers from one single fill. And in this world of EVs and PHEVs, it's going to have an EV coming soon. There's PHEVs of things like the Superb. It's just hard to overlook that type of fuel capacity and not having to stop to charge for just about anyone or anything. 
In fact, under the bonnet of the Octavia, you can get so many different engine combinations, it really is staggering. Um, because you get things like struts. A lot of cars now, that's not a thing. You, you just don't get that. It's been lashing rain, and there's no rain getting into this. It's all so well insulated and sealed. And whether you want petrol, diesel, plug-in or hybrid, all the options are here in this car. And when there's an electric one as well, that'll just make it even better. Anyway, enough looking around the engine bay for car anoraks. Let's check out the front of it and see what's going on. Oh yeah, umbrella, still there. They haven't cut that cost. And in here, Scraper for your ice and frosty morning, still there. There's also more of that simply clever stuff. Up here is a USB C port for a dash cam if you have one. Like, who else is even thinking of doing that? Nobody. First thing you're going to see in here is a big, massive Skoda sign. And it'll strike you as how colourful it is. And this larger screen, if you've got a first edition Octavia, you might have this larger 10 plus inches screen. Down here is just one swipe for the volume. There's no button connection at all for physical buttons for climate. Now there is a climate button you can press and that will bring you into a shortcut. But you still have to press that and you can't control the temperature at all on that. Although, I'm cold. No problem. It will get warmer at the front right shortly. So you can actually control the climate without having to use the touch screen. Ha! Uh, the buttons here are all easy to use. They'll flick through your menus. You can get your maps to display here if you have the extra expensive screens in the dashboard down here is where your wireless charging would go if you had it this car doesn't but you get two usb c's i had to go where is it 10 euro this cost me a whole 10 euro skoda unless you've got something that connects to a usb c now people leave me comments about this all the time my phone is a latest version iphone and it still won't connect into that and if you're using your phone to pay for things and you don't use cards anymore it's kind of vital that you have enough battery so get yourself one of them, 10 euro. I, if I wanted a slow boat to China, I would, could have got cheaper ones, I know. So this is a flat white, and it just about fits in the cup holders. They're a little bit small. Armrest, not a little bit small. Very big, very generous. Storage space down here is excellent. Get your auto handbrake going on here. Two vents, same problem with the Golf and the Leon. They're kind of blowing onto your knees. You can point them upwards, you can turn them off, Bit of a weird, bit of a weird design. It, it bugs some people, other people just get on with their lives and they don't worry about it too much. Uh, the screen generally is very fast. I've no issues with it. The CarPlay is wireless. You don't need to use a cable. In fact, uh, your buttons to control your heated seats, everything are in here. The heated seats are really good. Like every bar on it works. Sometimes the one bar you can barely feel. Sometimes the three bar burn the arse off you. But it just kind of works. And all this stuff feels good to the touch. The ambient lighting that you can change at night time to whatever color you like, that feels classy. Your glove box is really generously sized. There's a holder for a pen in there. There's a clip. There's a little uh, vent that you can use to keep things chilled. You still have the tag holder up the front here. I've already mentioned the USB-C. You get a sunglasses holder in the new Octavia. You don't even get that in the Golf anymore. I'm telling you, this is just all the car you'll ever need. The door bins are carpeted, like really carpeted, the whole way along the side and in. And this bit of chrome trim feels classy. You can obviously get different textures and colors if you want. Your visibility at the back is pretty good for such a long car. If you go for the optional glass sunroof, it's gonna cost you, it's gonna cost you handsomely. Uh, but I think with this kind of gray headline, it's not bad, it's not dark, dark. 
These pillars are a great size. They don't block your view when you're driving. And all in all, the inside of the Octavia is again full of nooks and crannies, things that are functional, things that are simply clever. And I just, I can't praise this car enough. This is the best scenario I'm in right now in the Octavia, cruising, not using buckets of power, not needing buckets of power. It's very quiet, it's refined, there's a bit of traffic noise from outside, the road surface is really good, and that means the ride is also very, very smooth and bum free. And that kind of sums up what this car is like when you're on the move and maybe you're doing motorway driving. This car just does it in its sleep. If you do need any sense of urgency, of power, 150 brake horsepower on top, it's more than enough, especially with the torque of this engine and how quickly the gears change. They're really sort of vital things that just make all this, this Octavia work very, very well. Over bumps, it's forgiving, it's quite soft. Wouldn't say wallowy, but not overly firm at all. Just on gentle acceleration there, you'll hear a bit of a clatter of a diesel engine. It's nothing you're not gonna forgive this car for. The seats are very, very comfortable. The driving position, spot on. Not too high, not too low. It's just right. And then to overtake a cyclist, just straight away, there's power there. It, it doesn't even break a sweat, it just, it's like, yeah, let's go. Even in stop-start traffic, this car will do 40 miles per gallon. Now, with a bit more freedom, not as much traffic, it's doing 50. And I'm still not in a stage or a situation where this is motorway driving or anything remotely like it. This is urban driving. The type of driving you'll do going to the shops because you need milk. 50 to 60 miles per gallon. This thing will run on an oily rag, as can sometimes be said. It's not going to handle as tightly as a Golf or a Leon hatchback. It's not that car. There's a bit of an overhang. It's all about space and interior space. That said, it's, it's not doesn't you know float around corners or anything like that but the dynamics of it versus a hatchback will be a little bit different lane keep assist works very well even on not the sharpest cleanest freshest of white lines on the road it can see them and spot them and keep you safe keep you in the right lane at all times i don't find it overly intrusive either things like collision avoidance rear traffic cross monitoring blind spot on this car you don't get them in every single pack and trim level on the octavia but they are there and you can get them up to and including a heads-up display which this car has where skoda are now in terms of reliability they're definitely a bit more expensive than they used to be that's one area that i don't see it getting cheaper but they're so much more refined now than they were. And when you think of the style of this car, the interior, the quality of how stuff feels, you really are not massively sitting below what is acceptable in a Volkswagen now. This is probably the best Octavia they've ever made. And they've made quite a few. And when you think of reliability in them, think of how many times you've sat in the back of a Skoda Octavia on the way home from a night out. I don't know about you, maybe it's just me, but if you get chatting to the driver and you see 400,000 kilometers on his dash and he goes, it's still on the first clutch as well. I don't know whether you believe them at all times, um, but I think that speaks volumes. They are a workhorse of a car. And now they just have a bit more comfort, a bit more style, a little bit more desirability about them. And they've got tech inside that you know really has them right up there with anything else and better uh, for similar money.
of course you can be badge snobby about it. Of course you can spend many, many multiples of the price of this car. But as an actual lump of metal on four wheels, sorry to talk about you like that, Octavia. This is all the car you're ever going to need. It will transport people, it will get you places cheaply, it will cost you buttons to run, and now we're at a level where it also looks good, looks good on the inside. No doubt it's gotten a bit more expensive than where it all started. But as an all round package, I just don't think there's anything else that you can buy for the money. If someone was to say to me, name one car that I should buy or look at that does it all from start to finish, I'd have to say the new Skoda Octavia. And I really, really mean that. So thank you very much for watching this review of the new Skoda. We're still on course to make 10,000 subscribers before the end of the year. We're over 9,000 now, so thank you if you have subscribed. You don't know how much I appreciate it. Even more so if you comment on a video or like a video or share one or send it on WhatsApp to someone you know who might be considering a car or just because you're watching these videos because you like cars. You have no intention of buying them, but it's a distraction from everything else. Everyone is welcome. And thank you very much for watching. See you soon.